Hey, Dr. Shepard, this is Dave Gottfeld. Uh, good video here. The one thing I'd say is make sure we get a straight shot on you. You're a little off center here, but I think you have the camera dead center. What I'm doing is I play real time just to kind of, and I squint and I kind of look for asymmetries. I look for if you're drifting one side or the other. And then I dropped a postural grid, and the nice thing is you can align it on your headset of your bike so you have a center line. And I'm looking for deviations. I'm just looking for your shoulder swaying one side or the other. You can also look at knee height one knee going higher than the other. Um, you may want to look at wrist angles and, and see if you have more pressure on one wrist or not. It looks like your right wrist is folded over more than your left. Um, your left knee is coming up higher than your right. I'd recommend putting probably tracer marks on your pelvis, probably on the ASIS and on the top part of your pelvis. Maybe some reflective tape or just some, and kind of see is, you know, are you shifting your pelvis a little bit? It is happening. Um, I really like the bullseye here. You center it right on the headset of the bike. One, it'll show you if you're drifting to the left and to the right a little more. Um, you can look at the shoulders, if, if one's drifting to the different colors or not. But the big thing I noticed was knees. You can actually align it so you can see how high are the knees coming up and then looking for an asymmetry. Uh, I, I see a huge amount of anterior compartment um, you know, uh, in the pelvis on that anterior hip being jammed up, um, labral tears things like that and uh, you know just because they're in this forward flex position in that closed pack position um, you can look for deviations of the knee you know flaring out obviously you can put a line on them um, but the bullseye was real handy just to kind of show a quick reference color-coded guide on what the difference was between left side and right side go frame by frame if you want you can change the speeds watch it over and over again again these are just my suggestions on things I'm seeing I definitely see there's some uh, restriction in your thoracic spine which will really show up when we look at you from behind here we go okay so we go behind what I'm seeing is your thoracic spine is kind of moving as a fused brick everything's kind of moving together looks a little like your pelvis is rotating a little bit more to its uh, pelvis is rotating to the right but it looks like that left side I'm seeing some restriction there on that left side um, in that thoracic spine that's definitely creating some compensations um, I would probably put some stickers uh, I'm gonna drop a line and put it right on top of the pelvis but I'd probably put it you can either put on the PSIS on the back side of the pelvis as a reference point on the athlete um, and just put the line right on top of the pelvis and seeing if does one side hike up higher than the other again you'd use this in your treatment you know and use your your regular modalities and your assessments that you use in your chiropractic practice to assist them um, but I'm definitely seeing some compensations there uh, in the pelvis and thoracic spine that I want to look at off the bike as well that would definitely lead to some uh, compensatory patterns on the bike All right, I think I'm gonna go side profile now. Now, obviously, everyone's gonna jump right to your, uh, you know, put a goniometer and, and measure the hip, the hip flexion, maybe the knee flexion. Um, that's e obviously easy to do. Look at the high point. I'm really kind of looking at your cervical spine, and uh, I'm seeing that curvature in the upper thoracic. Uh, looking at a, probably a restriction um, in that thoracic spine, getting excessive motion in the cervical. Um, we obviously can measure the spine angle. Really like the bullseye for this one because we can color code and actually line it and see how high does the knee come up. Remember the, the vector marks actually rotate so we can actually align it with the, uh, the highest point of hip flexion. And then we can see, are the strokes consistent? You can get a reference on the other side. Is it dead on? No, but you're gonna get a, a kind of a reference between the strides, um, you know, if there's a change. And again, the one thing I would recommend is a fixed known probably be the center part of each wheel. Get that measured distance and use the measurement tool to kind of get a fixed known if you actually want to measure distances. But that's my thoughts. I hope that helps.